In volleyball, we often hear that uh, success is only directly linked to hard work, that we have to train at least 10,000 hours to succeed. Yes, we can't improve and become a great player without a lot of training, uh, but success is not just about training. Successful volleyball players uh, didn't just uh, get to the top uh, through hard work, but also through many unfair advantages that I will describe in this video that will help you to become a better player. We encounter unfair advantages every day, even in uh, volleyball. Sometimes they are clearly visible, sometimes uh, they are not. Uh, what if uh, those who succeeded and became uh, great volleyball players uh, simply had unfair advantages over the other players? What if you discover from this video that you have your own uh, unfair advantages? Similar thoughts uh, come from the book Unfair Advantage, where the basic idea is that life isn't fair. And I think we can agree with that uh, statement. Not just life, but our volleyball life or a volleyball match uh, may not be fair. I know this uh, from my personal experience. Uh, we trained hard and prepared for an important match in Turkey. We believed uh, we would win, uh, but just before the match our setter got injured and we lost this important match. We could have uh, told ourselves how we would beat our opponent, but uh, the reality was different. We were just unlucky and uh, life showed us that it might not be fair. I am sure even you can think of a situation uh, you remember that wasn't fair. What is an unfair advantage? Uh, Ali Abdal says uh, that to be successful we need to play fair while having unfair advantages. Imagine a volleyball player who trains for two hours in the morning, spends the afternoon uh, recovering, uh, then has an evening practice. He just uh, does volleyball 100% and trains hard. That's an example of a fair play activity. On the other hand, uh, if another player has a rich dad who will pay a coach just for him since he was a kid, like in the case of uh, tennis players, that's already an unfair advantage that not everyone can afford. Unfair advantages are those advantages uh, that give others a big advantage over us. Uh, it's an advantage that cannot be copied or is uh, hard to imitate. On the other hand, uh, that doesn't mean that uh, someone has unfair advantages and I'm just unlucky not to have one. Every player, every volleyball player um, has at least one or two unfair advantages, uh, in my opinion. Sometimes uh, these are advantages that we don't even uh, know about uh, ourselves. But I dare say, we all have them, uh, some more, some less. Uh, so what unfair advantages uh, can I have in volleyball? Because volleyball is a team sport that depends on team and individual performance, we can have uh, many unfair advantages. Of course, the more we have, uh, the better. I'll describe uh, 12 unfair advantages that affect our performance and at the same time, we can work on the most of them. By far, the biggest advantage a volleyball player has is his technique. As an outside hitter, if I have amazing reception skills, uh, greater serving and uh, attacking technique than all the other outside hitters on the team, I have a big advantage. Uh, for example, the Argentinian outside hitter Facundo Conte is one of such players uh, who practically has no faults as an outside hitter. If I have better technique than the other players, uh, I have an advantage that the team and the coach will rely on my performance. Uh, I should be one of the driving forces of the team. The same goes for other positions. Uh, technique is our biggest unfair advantage. Uh, thanks to my excellent technique, uh, I can compete uh, with players uh, who have better physical parameters. Dmitry Muserski has an unfair advantage due to his height of over 210 cm. And height is a big unfair advantage for us. Whoever is over 2 meters in men's volleyball or around 1 meter 90 in women's volleyball has a big unfair advantage. Height has always been one of the deciding factors in our performance. Someone, on the other hand, is blessed with a great strength. Look at the German opposite, Grosser. His attacks and serves crush the opponent. He outplayed others because of his power. I personally know other players who, without any special attention to getting stronger, have hit like a cannon. Uh, their attacks were harder than other players' hits. Or there are players who will do a squat with 250 kilos. This is a big uh, prerequisite for them to jump higher and be able to jump for longer. Therefore, strength is also a big unfair advantage. I can't forget speed and jump. Uh, watch Russian Viktor Poletayev's uh, movements and amazing uh, jump parameters. 
he is not the tallest player, but thanks to his exceptional dynamic abilities, he plays volleyball at the highest level and can compete with much higher players. Uh, we can see the development of uh, speed and dynamics already in children uh, who start volleyball. Already there you can see who has uh, speed and explosiveness in their genetics and who has the ability to jump high and boast uh, this unfair advantage. Unfair advantages, however, are not just about physical parameters. Uh, when you watch uh, Erwin and Gapet play, you don't uh, just see power and hard attacks. Uh, instead, uh, you see a complex player who thinks about every hit, about every serve. His game intelligence is uh, much higher than the most similar top players. Therefore, in many cases, game intelligence is our unfair advantage. Uh, you know it yourself, uh, maybe you recognize it in your own skin. You are trying uh, your best to give your best performance and there is a player next to you who is always one step ahead. It's like uh, he knows uh, where the ball is going to go, where to stand, uh, where to pass or where to block. Everything seems to come naturally to him, he doesn't have to put in as much effort as you do. Many players make up for some technical or physical deficiencies with great motivation uh, combativeness. You know, uh, someone uh, lets the ball drop uh, next to him and doesn't mind uh, too much uh, that he didn't take the ball. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there are players uh, who almost, uh, without keeping their instincts, uh, go for every ball and uh, won't let even the most difficult ball fall on the ground. Therefore, even the, these qualities can be unfair advantages uh, for you. Also, a player with a great motivation has an advantage uh, of not having to talk himself into going to practice. Uh, the coach doesn't have to tell him in practice to practice at full. This motivated player has a tremendous inner strength and desire to improve. Especially, intrinsic motivation takes us a step further and is our unfair advantage in volleyball. Not only yourself can have an unfair advantage. An unfair advantage is definitely training under a good coach. Imagine that you devote uh, six to eight hours a week to volleyball practices uh, and the season lasts uh, eight months to 10 months. Then you train over 250 hours of practice in a year and well, if you are guided by an excellent coach, you can make far more progress in developing more than just volleyball skills than you can uh, with an average or poor coach. And by working regularly with a quality coach, you will gain an unfair advantage over other players uh, on other teams. The unfair advantage also includes uh, where you live. Uh, let's look at the example of uh, Alessandro Micheletto, who won the European Championship uh, with Italy at age of 19. Since childhood, uh, he has trained at the top club uh, Trentino Volley, which has long been one of the best clubs in the world. The opportunity to train at uh, such a club is undoubtedly a great unfair advantage. If you were born in Italy, Brazil, Russia, America or any other volleyball superpower, if you live in a city where volleyball is alive, uh, that is a huge advantage for you. On the other hand, if you live in a small village in the middle of the Sahara Desert in Africa, you have a big disadvantage. Uh, you probably won't have a volleyball club, a coach or maybe even a volleyball court in your town. We often talk about luck in volleyball. Personally, I think that everyone is uh, the creator of their own luck and can directly influence how much luck uh, they can have with their attitude and training. If you practice more, if you hang out in volleyball teams, uh, if you spend more time thinking about volleyball, if you go to more matches and follow everything around you, if you are active on social media, you will create the conditions to have more luck in volleyball and luck can become your big unfair advantage. Certainly, money also plays a role in volleyball and for some it is an unfair advantage. Uh, imagine uh, having so much money that you can buy any kind of uh, volleyball equipment, uh, that you can train in the best club, that you can go to camps uh, of the best coaches around the world, uh, or that you can go play abroad uh, and you don't uh, care if the club offers you big money. Just having money is also an unfair advantage uh, for volleyball players. Learning doesn't seem like a possible advantage uh, for volleyball players. It doesn't directly help you in a particular attack. But learning and education is essential if you want to be a good player. You have to learn all the time. Julio Velasco speaks about it that a player has to learn all his life and I totally agree with him. A lot of players uh, stop developing their volleyball performance at the age of 16 to 18. They just don't get better after that age. Sometimes there may be objective reasons in the meantime, but in the vast majority of cases it is about their attitude and uh, mindset. 
So whether you are 15 or 35, uh, watch volleyball, go to matches, uh, watch YouTube channels uh, with volleyball advice, uh, listen to other coaches, uh, have growth mindset, uh, think about the ways how to do things, uh, how this is a challenge for you. Don't have a fixed mindset. Don't tell yourself it's too difficult, I cannot do it then even learning will be your unfair advantage. Last but not least, I must mention the languages. Knowledge of uh, foreign languages is also a possible unfair advantage. For example, if you live in India and want to watch uh, my YouTube videos, you need to know English. If you don't know it, uh, you will be severely limited because most, uh, not only of my videos on volleyball area are in English. I have a big unfair advantage due to my varied uh, volleyball career. I can watch uh, matches and videos in English, Russian, Italian, Polish, French, and I will always understand what the coaches or players are saying. So don't underestimate uh, learning foreign languages. Uh, you want them uh, to be your unfair advantage. As you can see in volleyball, we can have uh, many unfair advantages, uh, not just the ones I described. We can work on most of them, some uh, we don't even know about. Uh, so think about uh, what your unfair advantages might be and work on them. Because even the slightest unfair advantage uh, can one day help you in a major way. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.